Hi, I'm Megan Bass Petty. I just want to extend my thanks for your support and also just uh, my wishes that you're safe right now, that you are feeling okay in your body, in your mind, that your families are well. So with that in mind, let's come into um, whatever uh, position feels best for you today. So whether that's seated or lying down on your back or maybe sitting up on your heels, I'm sitting up on a blanket that just helps to elevate the hips a little bit. So coming into whatever this uh, comfortable position is for you and closing your eyes or softening your gaze down towards the floor. Just starting to notice the natural inflow and outflow of your breath through your nose. If you feel like you need a little bit more grounding right now, you can take Chinmaya Mudra with your hands, which is your thumbs touching your index fingers, your other fingers <clears throat> just gently closing in towards your palms, and then resting your hands back on your legs. So sitting up tall, or if you're lying down, just completely relaxed on your back. Doing a scan from the top of your head all the way down the body through the toes. Noticing if there's any areas of tightness or tension. Starting to expand the breath into the belly. Noticing if your natural tendency is to breathe up a little bit higher in the top part of your chest. And if so, noticing that without judgment, just trying to bring the air down into your belly. As you inhale, expand and fill the belly. Then maybe expand through your side waist, through your diaphragm area. Now seeing if on each inhale you can fill the belly, expand into the side ribs or side waist, and also bring the air into the back part of the body. So a full circular breath all the way around. to release the tension that's in your jaw, in your neck and shoulders, maybe in your back or your hips or your legs. Breathing softly and smoothly. Taking one or two more breaths. Next inhale, breathing in through your nose, sighing out your mouth. And one more clearing breath like that, in through the nose, out through the mouth. You can keep your hands where they are or bring them up over your heart, coming into an intention for your practice today. Maybe sending some compassion out to all of the people who are working so hard right now to keep life going at a normal-ish uh, pace. All the doctors, the nurses, the hospital staff, especially the first responders.
all of those people in food service, all the farmers, all of the people who are doing their best to make sure that we can continue living in a way that's healthy. And feeling our gratitude for them in the heart. So when you're ready, releasing the hands down, maybe blinking the eyes open, or you can keep the eyes closed. And just start to take some circles with the torso. So you can start with very small circles. You can keep your eyes closed. Just feeling into each area of the circle, noticing if there's anything that feels extra tight or tense. And then reversing, taking your circles back the other way. And coming back to the center, just doing some seated cat cows. So nice and soft, inhaling the heart forward and exhaling rounding in, tucking chin to chest. Just moving at your own pace, moving with your own breath. And then coming back to the center, Bringing your hands out to the sides, palms face up. So we'll do the seated circle of joy. So inhale, the hands reach up, interlace the fingers, exhale down to your lap. Inhale, hands to the heart, exhale, press the palms away, drop chin to chest. Inhale, reach up and exhale, release. Inhale, reaching up. Interlace the fingers, exhale, bring them down to the center. Inhale to the heart, exhale, press away. Inhale, reach up, and exhale, release. So just two more times like that. Inhale, reach up, scoop up the energy. Exhale, down to your lap. Inhale to the heart, and exhale, round and press. Inhale, lift up, and exhale, release. So one more like that. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, down through the center. Inhale to the heart, and exhale, press away. Inhale, reaching up, and exhale, release. So you're just switching the cross of your legs if you are seated. An easy seat. If you're seated up on your heels, you can stay where you are. Again, we'll inhale, reach up. Exhale, twisting to your left, keeping your back elbow nice and soft, spine nice and long, just a gentle twist. And reaching around with your back arm, making an X. In the center, drop your chin to your chest, round your upper back, pull your belly button to your spine. Inhale as you circle the arms up and back around. So this time, inhale, reaching up, and exhale, twist to your right. Lift tall again through the spine, just gentle twist. Taking your back arm, reaching up and over, making an X with the opposite arm on top, <clears throat> dropping chin to chest, pulling your belly button in. Inhale, circle the arms all the way back open and release. This time just bringing your chin over towards your left shoulder and down towards the chest. 
and over to the right shoulder. And just moving so slowly and softly back and forth. Noticing any of those areas of tension or tightness in your neck. This time bringing the chin back to the center and lifting back up. And if you're seated on something, go ahead and set it out to the side. If you have a folded blanket and you'd like to use it under your head while we're lying down, you can do that. Otherwise, just set it over to the side. And go ahead and come all the way down onto your back. Bringing your knees into your chest, just holding the shins or behind the thighs. Give yourself a little squeeze, a little rock side to side. So we'll start at the feet and work our way up all the way to the neck as we mobilize the joints. So just extending your legs long, point your toes away from you and then flex them back towards you. So point, exhale, flex, and then point and flex. One more time, point and flex, and then circle the toes around. So moving through the ankles, and then change the direction of your circles. So with this series, we'll mobilize all the major joints in the body, keeping everything nice and healthy and moving. And then walk your feet in. And for this, we have a couple of options. You can keep one foot down on the floor, lifting your right uh, leg up parallel to the floor. And just from here, just let your foot fall in and come back up. And if you'd like, to uh, work your core a little bit more as you're doing this. You can always bring the hands underneath your seat, sitting on your thumbs, bringing both knees up, drawing your low belly and your back towards the floor, and then just let one foot fall, and then the other foot fall. But you can always keep one foot down on the floor, just starting to move through your knees. So not tapping the toes all the way down to the floor, just starting to let the foot come in towards your body. Just one more each side. And then gently hold your knees, start to circle them one way. And then the opposite direction. Moving, starting to move down more into the hips, circle the knees away from each other and back together. And then switch the direction. So staying here for a moment, set your left foot on the mat, draw your right knee around your ribs, and then either interlace your fingers around the shin or maybe behind the thigh if that's a little bit more accessible. You can also use a strap or a belt around the leg to just draw it in gently. And then maybe a little wiggle side to side. You can also extend your left leg out long, pressing through your heel. And holding onto your right knee with your right hand Open up your left arm to the left, palm facing up, and just draw that knee a little bit more open to the right, trying to keep your seat on the mat, your hips nice and level. And then switching hands, bring left hand to the right knee. The right arm makes a little cactus shape and draw the knee across your body. Just uh, any amount, you wanna still keep your right shoulder down on the mat. So your knee doesn't have to come all the way down. Just a gentle twist. And then coming back to the center, holding on to the leg again, maybe holding on to the shin or behind the thigh, draw the knee back around the ribs. 
and then set the foot down, keeping that knee bent at first. Draw your left knee in, interlacing the fingers again around the shin or behind the thigh, taking a few little rocks here side to side. And then as you draw the knee around the left ribs, you can keep your right foot on the mat if that feels better for your back, or extend it long, just pressing away with your heel, keeping your right leg engaged. And then holding onto your left knee with your left hand, open up your right arm to the right, and gently open your knee out to the side. And then as you come to the center, switch hands, grabbing onto the knee with the right hand, left arm opens to the side, draw the knee across the body into a little gentle twist, keeping that left shoulder down. And then coming back to the center, interlacing the fingers again, or just holding onto the back of the thigh. One more time, draw the knee in and around the ribs. and then setting that foot down, bringing your right foot back in. And we'll, we did a lot with, uh, when we were seated, doing um, articulations of the spine, so we'll continue that to warm up the spine. So with your feet right in front of your hips, tuck your pelvis under, and then arch your low back, pressing the tailbone into the mat. Exhale, tuck the pelvis under, low back presses down. Inhale, arch, and exhale, press down, and inhale, arch, and one more, pressing down, and inhale, arch, and coming back to neutral, this time we'll add in a rolling bridge. So press into your feet, tuck your pelvis under, roll up slowly, one vertebra at a time, start to lift your arms up towards the ceiling, maybe all the way back towards your ears or to the floor, keeping your neck soft. Exhale, slowly roll back down. Inhale, tuck the pelvis under, roll up the spine, lift the arms, exhale, roll down. So two more, inhale, rolling up, and exhale, rolling down. And last one, remembering that if you have been not practicing yoga or other movements as we've been kind of homebound the last two weeks <laughs> or week or so, um, notice that your body may be feeling a little bit more tight, so just take your time. So now coming up more to the shoulder area, reaching your left arm back any amount, so it doesn't have to come to the floor, you can just bring it back any amount, and then back down. Right arm reaches back, and then down. So linking your breath here, inhale, left arm back, and down. Exhale, right arm back, and down. Then draw the low belly in, press the low back lightly into the floor. As you reach the left arm back, Maybe you can extend your right leg away. And then come in, exhale, inhale, reach right arm back, left leg away. And then come back. And you can stay right here with this more gentle motion. Or if you'd like, you can lift the head, you can lift the feet, and reach opposite arm, opposite leg. Just making sure you're not straining in your neck at all, maybe keep your gaze on the ceiling. If your low back starts to pop up or feel strained, just place the neck back down and do one leg at a time with your feet on the floor. So you don't have to go to your max uh, at any point, at any time in your yoga practice. And then just bring both knees into your chest Setting the head down if it was lifted, give yourself a little rock side to side. And 
and setting the feet down. Turning your chin over towards the right shoulder and back through the center over to the left shoulder. Through the center into the right shoulder and through the center into the left shoulder. And then coming back to the center, you can roll to one side and press yourself up or take a few rocks up and down your spine. You can also try to catch a hold of your balance as you rock up and hold, maybe lifting the feet. Maybe one more if you're rocking. And then crossing the legs, coming all the way over into a tabletop position. So wrists right under your shoulders, fingers spread, lightly gripping the mat. And from here, just take a few rolls around with the spine. So that may be a circular roll like this. It may be more of a cat-cow as you come through the center. So see what would feel good, maybe a shift side to side. But make sure you go in all directions. Starting to feel that tension release out of your body. And then coming back to the center. I'm going to reach back with the right toes and then start to lift the leg up so it's parallel to the mat. And we may just want to stay here bending the foot up towards the ceiling and then straightening the leg. If you feel pretty balanced, you can reach your opposite arm away. So left arm reaches away. You can maybe reach back as you bend the leg, touching the toes or just kind of coming in the direction of the toes. You don't have to touch them, but really engage through your core, trying to keep your body right in the center, not wiggling around. So strengthening all your spinal muscles and your core muscles. And one more, reaching back. And then setting that down. And we'll step back with the left leg, reaching that up parallel to the floor. Maybe reaching your right hand forward or keeping that hand down. Again, you can just press the toes up to the ceiling. Or if you'd like, reach back with your right hand, bend your knee. Moving with your breath, inhaling forward, exhale, reach back and tap or come close to tapping. And last one. And then setting hands and knees down, bringing your knees wide to the edges of the mat, sitting back in a wide child's pose. You can reach the arms forward and set your head down on the mat or on a block. You can stack the arms. You can also stack the fist to make it a little bit higher. And then coming back to the center, bringing your knees back underneath your hips. We'll walk the knees back one time, shifting the hips forward, finding a plank on your knees. So you'd like to have a nice long line from the crown of your head all the way down to your tailbone so that if you tucked your toes under and lifted your knees, you would be in the perfect position for a plank on your toes. So from this position, if you set the knees down, you want to stay here, that's good. Work on drawing the low belly in up towards the spine, pressing into the hands, broadening across the shoulders. Again, maybe lifting the knees up and holding in your plank on your toes, maybe keeping the knees down the whole time. See what works best for you today. We're just going to hold it for three, two, one, and then you can set your knees down, lowering all the way to your belly, or if you're on your toes, shift forward, point your elbows to the back of the room, slowly lower to your belly, release the tops of the feet, Press into the mat, 
Press into the tops of your feet as you lift up a little baby cobra. And exhale, release. Inhale, baby cobra. Exhale, release. One more, inhale. And exhale. And then either pressing up back on your knees or tucking your toes, coming back through plank. And you can, again, you can stay up here on your toes. You can drop your knees. So if you're on your knees, maybe work with straightening one leg at a time. Just moving with your breath. If you want to press up to your toes, again, draw the belly in. Press into your hands, broaden across your back. Maybe tap one knee and then the other. Trying to make this motion match your breath. So one more time, tapping each knee down. And then again, you can lower the knees down, lowering all the way to your belly, or shift forward, slowly lower. Release the feet. This time, bringing your arms wide off the mat, like we did last week. Come up onto your fingertips. Maybe bring your feet a little wider towards the edges of the mat. Press into your fingers. Roll up. And exhale, roll down. Inhale, roll up the spine. Exhale, roll down. Inhale, roll up. So strengthening your arms, strengthening your upper back. Exhale, roll down. Bring your hands back underneath your shoulders, pressing up onto your knees or tuck your toes, pressing back up through plank, and this time lifting the hips up and back to downward facing dog. So from your downward dog, pedal out your feet. Maybe move your hands to the edges of your mat. Grab a hold of the edges of your mat. Widen your feet to the edges. And then see if you can pull your mat apart with your hands as you sink back towards your heels. So big stretch in the upper back and into the chest, all the way down through the armpits, the backs of the legs. And then coming forward, walk your hands back in, walk your feet back in, set the knees down, try to walk the hands forward in a wide V, dropping your head to either the floor or if you have a block handy here or a book or a pillow, you can set your head down on that, taking a puppy pose. Pressing yourself back to hands and knees. Maybe your hands are slightly a little farther forward than they would be in a tabletop. Tucking the toes, lifting the hips up and back to downward facing dog again. And then looking towards your hands. You can bear crawl up to the top of the mat. You can tippy toe or hop. However you want to get up here. And then just let yourself dangle. You can hold opposite elbows and sway or just let your arms be loose. As you start to come up to stand, maybe a little slight sway side to side, making sure you're supporting your low back with your core muscles by pulling your belly button into your spine. And then as you come up, Little twist side to side. So we'll move through a variation of a sun salutation. So adding um, some different 
elements, subtract, subtracting some elements, adding in a little bit of that gratitude right now that um, we really want to put out into the world and express. So bringing your hands to your heart as we move through the, um, the standing flow part of this, we're going to touch your thumbs to your eyebrow center, Ajna Chakra, and then uh, thumbs to the heart, Anahata Chakra. So as we touch this place on your forehead, honoring your own inner wisdom, and thumbs to the heart, having gratitude for something, someone in your life right now. So this does not have to be like, oh no, I need to pause here <laughs> for a long time and figure out something to be grateful for. It can just be like I have, I'm grateful I took the time to practice today. I'm grateful for the other students out there that I missed from the yoga community. I'm grateful for all of the people who are working behind uh, the scenes on everything for us right now. Grateful for your pets, grateful to have food. You know, couldn't be anything grateful for the sunshine, which we almost have here all the time. So bringing hands to the heart, just tuning in here first. So press the thumbs into the heart, roll the shoulders down and back. Close your eyes or soften your gaze. And releasing your hands, palms face forward. Inhale as you reach the arms overhead. Touch the palms, touch thumbs to the eyebrow center, thumbs to the heart, and fold. Inhale, come up halfway, hands to shins, long spine. And exhale, soften the knees and fold. Place your fingertips down, step back with your left foot, dropping the knee. So you can stay right here with hands on the mat or hands on blocks. You can bring your hands to your thigh or maybe sweep the arms all the way up. Bringing hands down to the heart. We'll take a twist over to the left and back to the center and bringing the hands down, stepping back to plank, and again, setting the knees down if you like, or lowering by coming forward on the toes, slowly lower to your belly, release your feet, inhale, baby cobra, exhale, release. Press up onto the knees or onto the toes, and back to downward facing dog. And looking forward to the top of your mat, walk, step, or hop forward, find a forward fold. Inhale, press into the feet, draw the belly in as you rise. Exhale, hands to the heart. Inhale, sweep the arms up, touching the palms, touch the thumbs to the eyebrow center, to the heart, gratitude in the heart as you fold. Inhale, halfway lift and lengthen. And exhale, place the fingertips down. Big step back with the left foot, dropping the knee. And again, you can keep fingers down, bring them to the thigh, or sweep the arms all the way up. And bringing hands to the heart, exhale as you twist to the right. Inhale to the center, and bringing the hands down, stepping back to plank knees up or down, lower slowly to your belly. Release the feet, inhale, taking a little cobra, strengthening the low back. Exhale, release. Pressing up onto knees or right back up into high plank and back to downward facing dog. Looking forward, walk, step or hop up and fold. Draw the belly in, sweep the arms all the way up. Exhale, hands to the heart. So I'll take that now from a standing position. So inhale the arms all the way up. Press the palms, touch your forehead. Gratitude in the heart. Step the right foot back, a big step. So into your high lunge. You may need to move your left foot over a little bit to get your balance, and then sweeping the arms all the way up, and bringing the hands to the heart, 
Exhale as you twist to the left. Inhale back to the center, reaching the arms up. Exhale, hands down to the mat, stepping back to plank. And you can skip this, take a child's pose if you like, or move back to down dog. Otherwise, lowering all the way to the floor. Find your baby cobra. And pressing back up on your knees or on your toes, back to downward dog. And looking forward, walk, step, or hop up. And fold. Press into the feet, rise all the way up. Exhale, hands to the heart. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Touch the palms. Touch your eyebrow center. Gratitude in the heart. And take a big step back with the left foot. Find your grounding in your feet. And sweep the arms all the way up. In your high lunge, bringing the hands to the heart. Exhale, twist over your right leg. Inhale to the center. Exhale, place the hands down. Step back to plank. Again, skip this if you'd like. Take a child's pose or just stay in down dog or lower all the way to the floor. So we're not doing a full vinyasa here with the chaturanga, just lowering down. Meeting back in downward dog. And this time staying in downward dog. So pedal out. The feet a few more times. We'll do a little bit of opening and core strengthening here. So reach the right leg high to the ceiling. Press up through your heel. Exhale, draw your knee towards your right tricep as you shift forward. Inhale up. Exhale, knee to right wrist. So a little lower. Inhale, reach the heel up. And exhale, knee to the belly. Inhale up and set the leg down. If you want to take a break here, take your knees down and take a child's pose. Otherwise, reach the left heel up. Exhale, knee towards the left tricep. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, knee to the wrist. And you can always bring your opposite knee down. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, knee to the belly. And back, reaching up to three-legged dog. Setting back down in your downward dog. So from here, start to walk your fingertips back to your feet. Find a forward fold at the back of your mat. Let yourself dangle. Soft knees. And slowly rise all the way up to stand. Hands to the heart. So now just coming to the center of your mat. We'll work on, again, just some strengthening in the ankles, strengthening in the joints. So starting to come into a mountain pose. So feet right underneath your hips. Lift and spread your toes so you have that nice, four point of balance on each foot. And then just lift your right heel up, let the bottom of your foot stretch. And then place that down, lift your left heel up, and place that down. So now just bringing hands to the hips, starting to sit back as though there's a chair behind you. So you don't have to sit back really far, or if you have a wall behind you, you can actually use that wall to slide down and then slowly come back up. And if you feel um, like you wanna stay, just sinking into your chair with hands on hips or hands at the heart or hands reaching forward, you can do that. Or you can start to lift one heel at a time, working on strengthening your feet and your ankles. If you feel pretty balanced, you can come up onto the balls of your feet but again, you wanna shift your hips back so that you're not putting pressure on the knees, holding this balance. Maybe seeing if you can sink even lower, maybe even lower. 
maybe all the way down to your heels with the heels lifted, maybe a little wobbly, it is for me. And just holding wherever you're at, coming out whenever you need to. And then if you're all the way down or in a lower position, shift your weight back out of your knees, press into your feet, slowly rise. Shake out your legs. Shake out your arms. So one more thing for the shoulder joints as we're standing. So bringing, actually probably more than one thing, but we'll see. <laughs> bringing your arms out into a T and then cactus the arms. So palms face forward. So you're going to turn your left hand down and back up and then right hand down and back up. So your elbows stay nice and even with your shoulders as close as they can be to that. And then if you want a little bit more challenge for your balance, challenge for your brain, as your hand comes down, lift your opposite knee and then switch and switch. So trying to keep your gaze steady on one spot will help you with your balance. And just doing one more to each side. And coming back to this palms forward position with your hands. As your hands come to the front, turn your palms towards your face and open up. And turn your palms in and open. And if you'd like to find a little chest expansion here or a back bend, you can open wider looking up. If you do that, making sure you're keeping the arch, the bend, and the upper part of your spine staying out of the low back. Really feeling how nice it feels to open up those areas of constriction. One more. And back in and release the arms. Just shake them out. And one last thing here for the uh, knee joints and doing a little standing balance. So press your weight down into your right foot, lift your left knee up, and you may need to hold onto a wall or a table or a chair for some balance here, perfectly fine. And just start to move your ankle side to side. So we're not only moving through the knee joint, we're also taking this all the way up into the hip joint. So the more you can place your gaze in one spot, the easier it will be to balance. And then setting that foot down, spread your toes, press into your heel, lift your other knee up. Again, you can always hold onto something here. And then let the ankle just swing side to side. And then release the foot down to the floor and we'll spread the feet a little bit wider. So we're coming down through Malasana through a squat. So if you want to lean back against a wall or use a chair, you can always do that. If you're at home, you probably have a lot more of those things available. If not, you can just slide your hands down your thighs, press your weight into your heels. You can stay up here a little bit higher, making sure you lift your chest or sinking all the way down into your squat, maybe pressing the uh, elbows against the inner knees. If you have a block at home, you wanna sit on a block, you can always go ahead and use a block as well. If your heels are lifted, you can try placing a rolled blanket underneath your heels or a towel. And then let yourself release all the way back down. And we'll bring the left leg out, right heel in, pressing into that inner thigh, inner groin area again, turning the torso over the straight leg. And you can put as much of a bend in here as you need. Start to crawl 
your body forward, reaching with a long spine. So if you want to straighten your leg or reach for your foot or bring the head towards your knee, Start to walk your hands back up. Place your right hand behind you with fingertips facing away. Press into that hand. Lift yourself up as your left foot presses down, reaching up and over, long stretch down the side body. And coming all the way down, just switching your legs. Shifting your torso over your straight leg, bending that knee as much as you need. So as you start to come forward, you can find that length in your spine. You can drop your head if you like, or straighten your leg or reach for your foot. Coming all the way back up, reaching behind you with your left hand, right arm sweeps up and over as your right foot presses into the floor, making a little arc. And coming all the way back down. We'll just do one more strengthening thing here before we really start to relax. So just dropping your left arm down onto the mat and really lining up your elbow underneath your shoulder, your wrist in front of your elbow. You can keep your bottom knee bent and your top leg straight as you press up into forearm plank. You can use this bottom arm to support, bring it to your hip or lift it up. If you'd like, you can straighten your bent knee, crossing one foot in front of the other or stacking the feet or lifting the leg or taking some other variations, so whatever seems good to you today, really press down into your forearm, lift your side ribs up, just hold. And lower your hip down, just shift your knees to the front, we'll go over to the other side. Dropping your elbow down again, elbow right under your shoulder, wrist in front of your elbow. Maybe bend your bottom knee or use this hand for support as you just lift up from the low ribs or extend that leg out, finding any position that works for you today. And just holding here, really press the arm, draw up on the side rib, side waist, and breathe. And slowly lower all the way down. Just roll over onto your seat. As you come down, slowly, 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 draw the belly in as slow as you can. And bring your knees into your chest. Give yourself a little hug, a little rock side to side. And then if you have a wall or a bench or a bed or a chair <laughs> handy, you can always take a supported legs up the wall position with your knees bent for a little more support of the back or you can straighten the legs. You can come closer to the wall than I am. I'll just hit this picture. So any position like that, you can also use the wall for a supported Shoulder stand, if that's in your practice, or headstand, handstand. If you don't have anything available, you can always just bring your thumbs under your seat bones or a blanket, folded blanket or a pillow. Draw your knees in. You can just pause right here with knees bent or lift the legs straight up in a supported, semi-supported <laughs> legs up the wall position. If you'd rather take bridge or some other inversion, feel free. You just want to get the legs 
up, elevated, reversing that pull of gravity. Starting to bring the legs back down, knees into your chest. Give yourself another little hug, another little rock side to side. And then walking the feet away from you, reaching the arms up overhead. Walk your feet over to the right edge of the mat and then cross your left ankle over your right ankle. Reach your arms to the right side, maybe clasping a hold of the left wrist with the right hand. Just a gentle side body stretch on the left side after those side planks. And let that release softly. Walk the feet over to the left. Cross your right ankle over your left. Reach up and grab a hold of your right wrist with your left. And side body stretch on the right side. And then letting that release, bringing everything back to center. Walk your feet in and just cross your right leg over your left. Start to draw your legs in towards your chest so you can hold on to your pants, to your thighs to your shins or your feet or your ankles. Gently draw the knees closer, let the shoulders, let the neck, everything relax. And softly release so your legs don't fling away from you, keeping them crossed. Just pick up your hips and shift them over to the left let your knees fall to the right. So a little bit different position with the legs in this twist. Let your left arm extend out to the side. This is too much twist in your uh, low back or your hips. Just uncross your legs, keeping your knees just dropped over to that side. And then bringing your chin back to the center Inhale the knees up and we'll cross left leg over right, bringing the knees into the chest, giving yourself another little hug or squeeze. And then setting the feet down, picking up the hips and shifting them to the right a few inches, cactus or extend your right arm, let the knees fall left. Again, if that's too much on the back, just release the cross of the legs. Maybe adding that turn of the chin to the right, sh to the right shoulder. Slowly bringing the chin to the center as the knees lift up and letting them release. Just doing one more last little hug of knees to chest or taking a happy baby holding your calves or your big toes, outside edges of the feet. Letting your knees come down towards your hips. Tailbone relaxes down towards the floor. Neck stays nice and soft. Bringing the heels back together, stretching out long. One last big stretch through your fingertips, through your toes. And setting up for your final Shavasana. So that may be arms at your sides, legs extended. That could be soles of the feet touching. You could use a blanket under your knees or across your hips. So making sure you don't cheat yourself out of this final relaxation. It's just as important, if not more so, 
than the rest of your class. Finding softness across your brow, the corners of your eyes, softness in your cheeks and your jaw, releasing the tongue from the roof of your mouth, finding space between your teeth, back body touches the floor and is supported. Letting your mind completely release. And staying in the Shavasana as long as you like. If you have five to 10 minutes to do so, that would be wonderful for your practice. And we'll close with this quote. I expect to pass through this world but once. Any good, therefore, that I can do, or any kindness I can show to any fellow creature, let me do it now. Let me not defer or neglect it, for I shall not pass this way again. And that's by Stephen Grellet. So when you're ready, make your way over onto your side in a fetal position, cradling your head on your arms, resolving to release anything that's no longer serving you. If you've been in a very fearful and anxious state this last few weeks, is that serving you? Slowly coming up to seated whenever you're ready. We'll close our practice with palms touching at the heart center. Press the thumbs into the heart. Draw the spine up along. Reach through the crown of your head. Feel your heartbeat beating for you. Having gratitude for your body and all that it was able to do for you today. Thumbs touch the eyebrow center once more, honoring and having gratitude for your own inner wisdom that will never lead you astray if you're listening to your heart, listening to that inner voice. Thumbs back to the heart with my gratitude for being able to bring this practice to you today. I thank you so much and I hope you spend extra take Care, extra time taking care of yourself right now. It's really needed not only for your own health, but for the health of all of those around you. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Namaste. Thank you.